Don't play none yet. That's a great word. It's not about us. For, for Instagram culture and a Snapchat culture, for them to say it's not about us, that's a word right there. 
Come on, let them hear how much you're proud of them for now. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. I just want you to sing that part again. Not about us. It's about Jesus. Come on. Y'all need to sing this. About us. Students, what's going on? It's Pastor Kendall here. Super excited because we are starting a new series called Only the Young. And it's such a great series because it talks about just the importance of embracing the years while you're young. Whether you're in middle school or high school, don't, let, uh, don't waste those years because they're so important. I want to share a quick story with you. So yesterday was my son's birthday. He turned six years old and we went to Urban Air, like the trampoline park. Like it was so much fun, but I can tell you for a fact that my body feels like I'm 30 years old. It no longer feels like I'm 13. It definitely doesn't feel like I'm 16 when I was athletic and I was in shape. No, it feels like a 30 year old man. And I know you say that that's not old, Pastor Kendall, but it's much different than feeling like 13 and 16. When I was jumping on that trampoline, I can feel it in my knees. When I was trying to hit a backflip, I feel it in my back. Today, I woke up this morning and I felt like I got hit by a train. And it's just so crazy because I remember being able to do so many different things when I was young that I can no longer do now that I'm at the age of 30. But I'm telling you now, embrace those years because they're so important and, and use those years to become who you know God has called you to be. Have you ever heard of the concept YOLO? You only live once. That was my motto growing up in school. When I grew up in high school, grew up in middle school, I was the kid that always liked to test the limits, that always liked to get right on the edge of things. Yeah, you only live once. So it didn't matter what it was. It could have been a dare. I was going to try. It could have been nasty food. I was going to try. It could have been like, this is really true, jumping off the roof onto a trampoline, hitting a backflip, landing on the ground. I was going to do it. Why? Because you only live once. If you don't know the definition of it, let me explain it to you, right? You only live once says that you can take risk and you live life to the fullest. You live life to the fullest because you are afraid that maybe if you don't do it, you're going to miss out on a fun or exciting activity. So you only live once. You just make up the excuse. Hey, yep, I think I'm going to skip class. Why? You only live once. I think I'm going to go to that party. Why? You only live once. You know what? So well, no matter what, I think I'm going to date this girl, date this guy. Why? Because you only live once. But what if I was to tell you, what if I was to tell you that the years of your life in middle school and in high school, what if I was to tell you that those years are so important, they're more powerful, they're more important than just testing the boundaries or just pushing the limit, right? They're so important that I want you to look at a guy in the Bible by the name of Timothy. Timothy knew what it looked like to push the limit, but he pushed the limit towards his calling for God. Many of us, maybe I can just speak for me when I was your age, here is how I was pushing the limits. I was pushing the limits by making fun of other people in front of my friends to get people to laugh all the time. Or I was pushing the limits by just really kind of being lazy and then skipping class and then maybe cheating on the test and just getting a couple of answers, you know, just pushing the limit that way. Or maybe I was uh, over, um, over uh, eating different things that I know I shouldn't have been eating or having a lot of caffeine in my body and then I couldn't sleep at night. And, or maybe it was going to the party. And drinking something that I know I wasn't supposed to be drinking. Or maybe it was sending pictures that I wasn't supposed to be sending. Whatever the case may be, I knew at that age how to push the limits. Why? Because you only live once. 
So I don't know about you, but I want to change that perspective of you only live once to that. You are young and these years of your life are the most important years of your life. Why? Because you're going to it's going to help you shape who you are in life. It's going to help you determine your reputation, help you build your character, help you find your faith and your foundation in God. And so I remember here's a quick story about my life. Some of the mistakes that I made. Right. Um, I was probably in the 10th grade and talking about pushing the limits. Um, we went to the movies and one of my friends bought a ticket. And a lot of us was, you know, we're so used to you only live once that uh, he bought the ticket, went into the theater, began to sit down. And as he was sitting down, he said, you know, what? a great idea would be to sneak the rest of my friends in. So we didn't buy any tickets at all. We just waited for him to knock on the back door. We opened the back door. He snuck all of us in. Y'all, it wasn't like two or three of us. It was 12. 12 of us. Can you imagine 12 people walking in front of the theater and sitting down in front of everyone? Yes, absolutely. Some way, somehow, the employees found out about it. They came and grabbed us, asked us if we had a ticket. Of course, we didn't have a ticket. We had to stand up in front of the whole movie theater, walk outside. They called our parents, kicked us out of the movie theater, and told us we were never welcome back. Crazy, right? Like, it's just because we weren't thinking about the consequences. We weren't thinking about the reputation. We weren't thinking about our character. We were just thinking about enjoying the activity because you only live one time. There's a guy, actually two guys in the Bible, Paul and Timothy. And I think if nothing else, we can learn from what Timothy had to go through and what Paul was saying to Timothy. Timothy is a young mentee of Paul. Paul was the older guy, the man that had the wisdom. Timothy was actually young, kind of like you and me, actually much younger than me. He was actually a teenager. But here's what ended up happening in Timothy's life. Timothy ended up being a kind of like a leader or pastor because Paul was over a bunch of different churches. And Paul made it Timothy's calling or Paul made it Timothy's, um, uh, I guess you can say, assignment to lead this church. And as they were traveling, Paul would always write Timothy these letters and he sent Timothy to a town and he wrote him a letter to encourage him. He, he wanted to encourage him to be who you are, even though you're young. He wanted to encourage him that you're a great leader, even though you are young. And here is one of the things that Paul wrote to Timothy. You can find this in First Timothy chapter four, verses 12. He said, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. He said, but set an example for believers in your speech, in your conduct, in your love, in faith and in purity. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? He says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. I don't care if you're 13, 15, 16, 18. That's watching this video. You are important. Here's what Paul is saying. You're important and you have influence. And not only do you have influence, but I'm challenging you to use that influence the way that Paul told Timothy, Timothy to use the influence. He basically said, set an example, set an example for your friends. Maybe everybody else wants to skip class. Maybe you say, you know what, that's not the best. Maybe everybody else wants to sneak into the movie theater and you say, you know what, maybe that's not the best decision either. Maybe everyone wants to cheat on that test, but maybe you say, hey, how about we just have a study party? See, Timothy knew how important it was to set an example because Paul told him in your speech, the things that you say, how important is it to say the right things even though you're young? In his conduct, in his character, have an integrity when nobody sees you, do you do the right thing? In his love, the way that he treated people, and most of all, in his faith to God. Timothy knew these things were important because it came from Paul. And as he seen Paul as his mentor doing all these great things, Timothy knew I can too do these things. That's a great point right there to just stop and say, maybe you need a mentor. Maybe you need someone in your life that can show you the ropes. One of the best things that I've done in my life is I have a mentor for everything. I have a mentor because I'm a husband. I have a mentor because I'm a father. I have a mentor in ministry. I have a mentor just for being a man, right? In all these different areas in my life, I can call someone when I'm going through the uh, tough times of my life and I can say, hey, can you help me? Can, have you ever went through anything like this? And maybe for you, that's a coach. Maybe it's a parent. Maybe it's an aunt or an uncle, or maybe it's 
a small group leader, whoever it is, I challenge you to find a mentor the same way that Paul was mentoring Timothy and challenging Timothy, right? Here's another thing that Paul told Timothy, because remember, Timothy now has responsibility of leading this entire church. So Paul told him, he says this, he says, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Let's stop right there. He says, guard what God has entrusted you with. What has God entrusted you with in your life? Is it your friends? Is it your family? Maybe it's just your influence. Whatever God has entrusted you with, I challenge you to guard those things. He says, turn away from godless chatter. What does that mean? Turn away from conversations that are not the best. Turn away from gossiping about others. Turn away from when people want to talk about somebody else and you know that that conversation isn't the best. He says, turn away from those things, right? He says, um, he says stay away from the falsely uh, from fa false teaching that is called knowledge. So the people that are trying to say things about God that you know isn't true and I know isn't true, he's saying turn away from those things. And here is how we find out if those things are true or not. You got to read it for yourself. I could be telling you anything, but you got to go back and study for yourself because the Bible tells you study to show thyself approved. Sh study to show yourself, you know what, I, I understand this for me. So what Paul was trying to tell Timothy is guard what God has given you and not only guard it, but actually turn away from anything else that would distract you from what God is trying to do. So my challenge for you today is take advantage of the years that you have. Guard the influence that God has given you, because here's an example. Every single one of these ping pong balls is going to identify as maybe a day or a month or even a year of your life. And so right now you may be 12, 14, 16, 18, whatever it is. You only have a certain amount of years left before you are an adult. And every single day you're losing one of these ping pong balls. Every day. So I want you to think about it. What do you do with the influence that God has given you? What do you do with the relationships that God has given you? Every day, this day right here, this month right here, you can do something great with this month or you can do something horrible that actually sets you apart from your friends. And maybe you don't bring anyone closer to God because this was a bad month for you. But really, I want you to think about it. Every single day that goes by, you're losing another chance of your youth. You can think about it that way, or you can think about it in the sense of, hey, I can do something special today. I have the opportunity to change someone's life today. Did you know that if you're in high school right now as a freshman, you have 209 weeks left? What do you do with that time? What, do you become the best student possible? Do you become the best daughter, the best son possible? What you do with your life matters, because every day, you're losing another opportunity. I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'm saying this so that you understand just how important it is. Because, yes, you do live once, but the youth, the years of 13 to 18 is so important. And I, and I, and I close with this. Two things I want you to do. I want you to ask God, God, what is it that you have for me? What is it that you have for me? Do you want, what do you want me to do with these years that I have in middle school? What do you want me to do with these years that I have in high school? And then the second thing I want you to do is just evaluate what are you currently doing? God may ask you to lead a, um, um, a Bible study on your campus. Will you be ready for it? Evaluate what you're currently doing. If you're not currently reading the Bible, maybe that would be a tough challenge for you. God may ask you to help one of your friends financially because they don't have it. But if you're not saving your money and being a good steward of your money, then maybe you can't you can't help in that way. Whatever it is, I want you to do those two things today, because the truth of the matter is, YOLO, you only live once. But you have got to find a way to make the best of your years while you're young. God bless you. Let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for an opportunity today. God, thank you for my friends that are watching this video. I pray right now, God, that even though we are still young, that we still have influence. And I pray that we do not look past the years of 13 to 18. But God, we focus in and know that you're going to use us in a great way. And we look forward to seeing what you do in us and through us. In Jesus name, we do pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again next time.